Hello everyone. Um, so far we have covered classification and tabulation of data into frequency tables and also um, converting these tables into graphical representation. So this has helped us to reduce the entire mass of raw data into small sizable understandable bits. And then based on that, when we construct frequency tables, when we represent that data as pie charts or frequency tables or frequency polygons and so on, we understand what the data has to tell us. But all these diagrams are merely descriptive in nature. Sometimes we are looking for a single value. We are looking for a single value that can represent that can represent the entire mass of data that we have at hand. So when we're looking around for this single value, we generally go for um, one of the various measures of central tendency. Now these measures of central tendency, they're also called measures of location. This is because we are basically looking for a single point value of data around which the remaining data sets the remaining set of values tend to cluster so these averages measures of central tendencies they are called averages or means the various terms that we use are averages we use the term mean and we also often call them measures of location because it is giving us a location of a single value around which the remaining values seem to cluster. So what are the different measures of central tendency that we'll be discussing? We'll be discussing arithmetic mean. We'll be discussing the median, mode, geometric mean and harmonic mean these are the main measures of central tendency that have been covered that have been explicitly given in the syllabus uh, if you go through the guide that um, calcutt university has published this time um, there are also we also have a general look at positional values like the quartiles deciles and so on so we will start off today with arithmetic mean. Certain characteristics of averages or mean values are that they are representative values. So they can be, like I said in the definition itself, they can be taken to uh, be seen as single values that can represent the entire mass of data. Um, what are the examples that you can think of? Average mark of a student in the 10th um, for a class as a whole. What is the average maths marks that the class has got? So that would give us a represent be give us a representative idea of the mathematical or quantitative ability of a class as a whole. Um, the average height of the students, the average height of the students in a class would give us an idea about uh, on an average about how tall the class is. So if you take the average height of BA third sem students in a University of Punjab or uh, University of Punjab and the same BA third sem students in University of Calcutt you will have an idea about the population and the tendencies of height right so um, there are interesting uh, racial studies that have been done on, along these lines right on an average we say that North Indians tend to be Punjabis especially tend to be uh, taller and heftier than 
us uh, pavam south indians right so um they these averages allow for comparison right you have got two different populations find the average of both the populations for the same piece of data and you can compare that's what the example that i gave here average height of students of ba third sem in punjab and uh, of punjab university and of calcutta university you've got a sense of comparison right you can compare average wages average wages paid to agricultural labor in kerala per day and average wages paid to the same agricultural labor agricultural labor in say west bengal and you realize that the average wages paid to agricultural labor in kerala is much higher than that in west bengal or is and bihar which is what the main reason why we have migration from west bengal and orissa and bihar to kerala you know or bengali labor that is the reason because the average wages in kerala is paid to agricultural labor is much higher okay um uh, what other advantages or characteristics yeah averages facilitate sampling techniques um this is actually they facilitate sampling techniques or based on um, this is something more technical when you are when you collect data for certain studies scientific studies for prop, uh in order to make some inference about a population averages play a very important role okay there are certain conditions that the population or the sample averages should fulfill which will help us to um to generalize our findings from the sample to the general population okay for example if i have a correctly sample okay i'll just leave it at that we'll come to um, examples later then averages pave the way for statistical analysis okay the reason i'm not writing this um, down in word and putting it up on moodle is because i am reading this right out of the guide that you have got okay uh examples of statistical analysis where averages play an important role regression analysis um i think you will be covering it in your 6th sem final year of ba when you read econometrics regression analysis basically studies how a dependent variable which we call the y variable is being affected by independent variables x1 x2 and so on uh, so in economics an example would be how is the quantity demanded for oranges being determined by the price of oranges and maybe the weather maybe the tastes and preferences for oranges maybe the fact that Uh, whether pesticides have been used in these oranges or not and so on right so um when you do analysis of this sort again averages become very important um another index numbers index numbers um every month we have the wholesale price index being calculated we have the consumer price index being calculated these indices are also some sorts of a- average or measure of central tendency of the prices of the economy which is why we look at the wpi and the cpi and we try and determine what is the rate of inflation that is there in the economy so um averages have very important um role to play and especially when it comes to statistical and economic analysis we come across lots of averages which are important average wages average wage levels um like i said wpi cpi what is the average growth rate of different countries over a decade and so on um there are numerous examples that you can think about 
Now let's have a look at what are the desirable properties of an average. Okay. Some of the desirable properties. Firstly, it should be rigidly defined. That is, there should be a specific formula or procedure for finding the average. So whether you calculate the average or I calculate the average or some other student from some other class calculates the average they should arrive at the same average assuming there are no calculation mistakes right they should get the same answer so that is uh, the formula and the procedure should be given and well defined second it should be based on all items right so it should be a representative of the entire set of data that we have and should it should in some way or the other depend and represent the entire set right um, it should not be unduly influenced or affected by the extreme points or the extreme items right uh, it often happens when you take a sample from a population you have one or two very large values so take an example um, okay um, I'm just making up these examples say um, I'm collecting data about weekly expenditure on oranges of families so i take some 50 to 100 families and to every family i ask them what is the weekly con uh, consumption expenditure weekly expenditure on oranges last week so if i do that i might come up with one or two extreme values for example say one family had a say one family had lots of guests coming over who were staying for the vacations and if you look at their consumption consumption expenditure last week on oranges it could be extremely high but when you're taking an average when you want to calculate an average expenditure weekly expenditure on oranges for a family you would not want to consider that particular family as that was a special case so we do not want the extreme points to have any or too much influence on the measure of central tendency that we choose another uh, desirable property is that it should lend itself to algebraic manipulation which means based on this mean or average of two separate sets of data I should be able to find the average of the combined set okay it is only then that I can use it for forecasting prediction and so on of course it should be simple to calculate easy to understand right it should have sampling stability now that is again something a little technical so sampling stability means that from a population I can take however num how many ever sa number of samples that I want the average for each sample will be slightly different however the difference between average averages of samples drawn from the same population should not be too different from each other because if they are too different from each other then we would not be able to uh, confidently say that both the samples come from the same population so that is it's a technical requirement and it's termed as sampling stability okay again just understand this roughly because um, more detailed understanding is required when you start doing using uh, these values and these concepts in econometrics later on okay